Welcome everybody to Five Questions With. I'm Kathleen O'Keefe from Kathleen O'Keefe Energy Healing. I'd like to welcome my guest today, Margaret Lambert. It's uh, really, really lovely to have you here, Marg. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Marg before we get started. Margaret is a psychologist and award-winning author, speaker and EFT, emotional freedom technique trainer. Margaret has trained in Australia and in the US with founder of EFT, Gary Craig, and also well-known natural health expert, Dr. Joseph McCullough. Margaret writes in the area of holistic health and well-being and finding the inner voice. So welcome, Marg. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, my I've, pleasure. I have watched your previous five questions with and thoroughly enjoyed them. Oh, thank you. That's great. Um, well, it's really about connecting community and creating conversations. So I just um, really want to introduce people out there, our watchers, to the amazing people I've connected in with my direct community and hopefully we can expand it out there a little bit. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Cool. Yeah, making connections is the key at the moment, I think, in, in today's world. Definitely. Yeah. So I'll just go, I'm going to jump straight ahead to the questions, Marg. I'm going to fire them at you. So <laughs> easy, easy to start with. The first question I've got for you today is what do you love most about your work? I, I see that I have two lines of work, really. Um, I have my psychology work and then I have my writing work. And in my psychology work, I absolutely love the, uh, the journey, travelling with people wherever they are in their journey. And, of course, being a psychologist, um, you usually meet people at their most trying times mm -hmm. in their lives. That's when they seek out, you know, some, some assistance. And so it's, it's quite an honour that people would come to me to help them in those times and to travel with them. And it, it really is a privilege to be able to journey with them wherever they are to, you know, for, for them to be able to move forward um, that's it's quite exciting for me to see for, for them to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel um, or achieving their goals whatever it is they might come to me for and then there's the writing side of, of my work and what I enjoy most about that and, and I suppose it's the parallel to what I do you know the, the, the enjoyment I get from working with the people who come to me in my psychology work is the uh, the my own personal journey. So that's the tag that I have uh, finding the inner voice. That's a tag on my web page, on on the home page, on my banner, because it is all about finding the inner voice, and it's me finding my inner voice, and I love to write from that space and. And, I, and that does tie in with the work I do with others in facilitating with them for them finding their own inner voice as well. Oh, that's, oh beautiful. that's beautiful. I love how you explain that. And, and I just need to say that you are so good at holding space. I know I haven't been to see you personally, but I've brought my daughter to see you and, and you know, just the space that you provide and the heartfelt connection that you create with your clients, you know, makes a real difference. I know it made a real difference for her. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. And, <laughs> you know, it's my privilege really yep. that um, people will be in that space and, and the courage that they have to enter. You know, it, it's not easy no. to tell the worst of you you know or the worst that's going on in your life or you know and it's generally the failures I can't get on with this person or I'm so angry about this situation or I lost my job and it really is quite courageous that people would enter that space too and and then the added privilege include me to discuss it with and try to come to some resolution or, or peace with that situation. Yeah, and a real gift to be able to hold that space for someone. So, you know, we're, I, I'm so grateful to have someone like you in our community. Uh, thank you very much. 
So the next question I've got for you, Marg, is who are you inspired by and why? Wow. Um, yeah, the people who have inspired me, like I'm, I'm going beyond, like honestly, there, there are everyday saints. Mm. You know, I, I think my clients, the people who come to me inspire me. Oh, that's Their stories beautiful. inspire me. And I, I just go, wow. <laughs> when they leave, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, the, you know, the courage. It is so, there is so much um, <laughs> crap <laughs> yeah. in, that people have to deal with because mm. that's life. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, it's not able to be planned in a nice rosy way. And we do, you know, we, we encounter some very difficult challenges. So I see saints every day. And, but beyond those people and, and, you know, people like yourself, you know, that do amazing work. Oh, and I've had the privilege to work with you and speak with you on, on stage, you know, with a, a couple of um, presentations we've done yep. and that's been a real privilege for me that you know you people inspire <laughs> me and um and beyond that that the people that I know in person I do have some wonderful mentors in um in you know times gone by so I, I read about them you know one of them is Henri Nguyen and um I think he uh, is is a person, you know, they're spiritual guides for me, people that have written in the spiritual realm. Nice. And, and one of his gifts to me is that the greatest gift you can be for others is just to be there. Yeah. Just being yourself without, it's a beautiful verse and I wish I could memorise it exactly, but it's, you know, the person that we value most is often the person who doesn't have all the answers, who doesn't know the way forward, but just can sit with us in our helplessness. So that's a... That just yeah. gave me goosebumps then. <laughs> that's yeah. so nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and another person is a mentor that's been in my life and he has said, again, a spiritual person, and he has said, um, meet people where they are at. Mm -hmm. That's something I've never forgotten. And I've added to that. Meet people where they are at, not where you are at. Yeah. Because yeah. often I can be in a pretty, you know, <laughs> difficult space, you know, I have my, my world goes on too. Yeah. Um, and if I try to meet people from where, from my position, I might totally miss the mark of where they're at. And then you, you don't have a bridge of communication at all. So I try to, one of my mantras, I suppose, and my guiding light is that quote, if you like, and I've made it one of my quotes, meet people where they are at, not where you are at. Yeah, well, I'd just like to say how that's stuck with you. That has stuck with me too. And that actually came from you. And when I met, <laughs> I, I uh, did Margaret's training in, oh, I think it was, geez, I think it was nearly two years ago now for EFT, which is also known as tapping. And that's one thing that you said in our training that I, you know, that is still written, in, you know, it was written in my notes and it's just, it's stuck with me too. And I'm sure I even have heard it before in some way or on some level, but obviously yeah. I needed it more in that moment. And it, I've, I use that all the time, Marg. Yeah. So you may, <laughs> now I know where you've got it from, but you know, just know that it carries forward always. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, and yeah. isn't that wonderful that, yeah. Uh, yeah. People who have gone before us, they, yeah. they do live on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's so nice. I love hearing how you, you know, your, your, the people that inspire you are so broad, you know, and I love how you started with the, you know, the people that you connect with on a daily basis. I think sometimes we look too far um, to find something that we miss what's right in front of us. So I, I, yeah. loved, I loved how you um, express that. And, and a friend of mine has recently walked the um, Camino de Santiago. Oh. It's a pilgrimage in Spain. And 
it's it's a way of uh, St. James was the saint that walked it and, and it's a well-known pilgrimage for people on a spiritual journey. Oh, wow. And he told me a story that, you know, I think he did 100 kilometres over five days in 20-kilometre stints, say. Yep. And you get to walk with people or a person and he said one day he walked with this lady for quite a distance and they got chatting and of course the question is asked why are you doing this and what have you got out of it or, and um, so the answer she gave the most I've got out of it is walking alongside the living saints oh that's beautiful Isn't that beautiful yeah that's really beautiful what, so what an amazing experience to have yeah yeah, yeah. imagine yes. imagine the footsteps that you're following you know yes yeah, yeah. from yeah. years gone by that would be pretty yeah. cool yes yeah. yeah all right mark so my next question is what's the best piece of advice you have ever received and did you actually take it <laughs> <laughs> goodness <laughs> Oh, gosh, the best piece of advice. Wow. Um, um, I, I think, um, you know, when, when I, was, I was incredibly sick, I was in a very <laughs> dark place. I was so unwell for so long with chronic fatigue syndrome. And I would have the constant advice you've got to be positive, you know, be positive, pick yourself up. And whenever I would try to do that, I just found it backfired so often. And, yes, I tried to do it, but I, in being positive, it turned out that my positive approach was, became an expectation that if I'm going to be positive, yes, I'm going to be able to walk today. You know, I was quite debilitated hmm. and bedridden. And yes, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm better today. I'm, I'm over this, you know, talking positive. And I would get so destroyed yep. when that didn't happen. And so that great advice, and I know how well-intentioned it is, and I know the power of positive thinking, you know, for goodness sake. <laughs> yes. It's all the basis of psychology in a yeah. way. Yeah. Um, and, and keeping on top of things. But in that moment, it just didn't work for me. And so it took me a while to realise that don't follow it. Don't even try to follow it. It's not working. It's it's bringing you down even worse because I would come down with a thump even harder that, oh, well, I can't even do that. I can't mm. even get my thoughts sorted. They don't talk to my body. Mm. Um, the whole thing's just not even damn worth it. And then I had a, you know, a beautiful um, spiritual advisor at the time to help me get through th these low points and you know, he would say, well, maybe that's not the best advice. Maybe you don't need to take that advice. And once I started that, that was the beginning, I think, of my, my greater acceptance oh, of beautiful. where I was at. Yeah. That, okay. And, and so I, in my book, you know, I, I wrote the book on chronic fatigue syndrome, Longing to Live. Yep. And I wrote a whole section on being positive and the danger of it. Oh, that's <laughs> and, good. And, and it was, I came up with, because we don't want to, I thought being totally positive didn't work mm. and obviously being totally negative is not going to work, work either. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to get me going. Mm. And so I found that I had to be real. Yeah. And so my writing was along the lines of between positivity or being positive and being negative is being real. Oh, that's beautiful. So really, even though you were being given advice, you actually filtered through that and took your own great yeah. advice. Yeah, yeah, and that took some time yeah. to arrive at that place because yeah. I knew it was all about being positive. Yeah, and course. I don't remember if I was a psychologist 
at that time or not because that's you know I, I've had other other lives yeah. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> mm, that um, might be another interview <laughs> <laughs> sounds and ominous so I don't know if I you know if I was well I suppose everyone's you know we, we're all given uh, the power of positive thinking yep and I think that was inbuilt in me that I have to be positive. This will get me through if I'm positive. And then to get that affirmed or confirmed by yeah. other people is, just is, cemented it. And then it, it kind of cemented in me how badly I was at this because yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> or when I did, I, I came crashing down. And so, that, yeah, there was a real turning point that, yeah, between positivism and negativism yeah. is realism. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. really cool. So my next question is probably the opposite to that one in a sense of what's the best piece of advice you could give our viewers around something that means a lot to you in this moment? So you can pick something that you that that's been going on in your life, and and tell us a little bit about that. But what would be the best piece of advice? Well, you? Kathleen, what I choose is what you're going to join me with on in Blab. Yeah, <laughs> in a few minutes' time after this interview. Yeah. We're doing a blab session together on Shine Your Light. Oh, right, cool. And I think that's that comes from within. Mm -hmm. And it's very uh, personal to me because, and, and I know I've heard it from other people as well, that we put ourselves quite often as the underdog in order to allow other people to shine and to feel better about themselves. We'll put ourselves down. And I think I've done that a lot in my life that, and, and I've, I've come to a point now and been inspired by the beautiful Anita Mojani who's written the most beautiful book called Dying to Be Me. Yeah. And I was I had the opportunity to see her on in Brisbane on stage speaking a couple of weekends ago. And it is she's all about shine shining your own light. Don't put yourself down. And I think my challenge when we move into the world of social media as well is you have to put yourself out there and oh yep. that's that's a little bit uncomfortable for me because I I'm a private person I can't put myself out there that's not what you do you let other people take the stage and take the limelight and and you stay in the backdrops and it's taken me you know a, a lot of courage I suppose and just to take that step forward and and that's what we're going to be blabbing about um in a little while and uh, you might want to explain the blab platform to your <laughs> well, viewers. It, it's it's just a live streaming conversation you know yeah. um it's it's great so if you haven't if you actually haven't been on there um check it out you can download the app or you can just, I, I find it better on the computer at the moment because it is in beta mode, so it is still in, in test mode. Um, but you can connect with some amazing people and, and people can jump in and out and still comment. So you can be part of a conversation or watching a conversation. So, And, and the web address just for the viewers is blab.im. Yep, I that's think. right, yeah. And so you can find lots of shows, lots of conversation. Mm. And, and, um, yeah. Yeah. And so, Marg, from that that you've just spoken about, what's something, just in a sentence, what's, what's a piece of advice you could give someone that was struggling with finding their inner light or struggling on social media because it is so out there and it's not what we're used to? What's, just, what's yeah. a simple piece of advice you could give them? Well, trust who you are. Yeah, trust beautiful. in yourself and in who you are. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's been that because it's been coming up for me as well. So, yeah, it's really nice to hear. So, my last question, Marg, is what's one item you can't live without and why? <laughs> um, one item I can't live without. Uh, 
Okay. I guess when I say item, yes. I, I'm not. Maybe yeah. I need a better word because it's just no. one thing. You yeah, know? it doesn't yeah. have to be a physical okay. thing. It's not too far away from me. It's a little wooden cross. Oh, beautiful! Tell me uh, the story. Um, this actually came from Israel, uh, a friend, and so in the, I, I went to Israel many years ago, and. Um, I, I didn't gather one of these and then a mentor visited and, and returned this to me uh, as a gift just and, and it means a lot to having come from the land, you know, of Jesus Christ. Um, he's one of my mentors as yeah, well yeah. As, as other spiritual leaders yep, that have gone yep. before. And uh, this is, um, you know, just a lovely little wooden cross that... I, I can put in my pocket. I and, and I have a number of these things. I, I do have a crystal as well, and well, I also have my father's rosary beads. So you can tell I was brought up a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my mum's rosary beads too. <laughs> yeah, they don't go with me wherever no. I go because they're massive. They're wooden, oh, and okay. my mother got them from the Middle East when she served there in the war, oh, wow. I believe. Wow. And so they're, they've, they're marked Jerusalem on them. Oh, and really? so they, they're kind of always under my pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's kind of little things. But this little cross, it, it's because it's so portable, I can just hang on to it and know that I think it keeps me in touch with the greater guide, yeah. the greater God, the greater guide. Never, you know, I never want to forget that um, there is the greater wisdom and the greater love that surrounds me and guides me. Yeah. And, and um, I love to be able to tune into that as much as I can. Well, that's beautiful. And and it's it's so wonderful to know that that's there and to meet people and listen to how others perceive that you know, and sharing their stories and, and the little things that kind of help connect them to it because we don't need anything but as human beings it's nice to have those physical yeah. things that are tangible. We need to touch and feel and that to sometimes bring our focus into what's important in the moment. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a beautiful story. It's <laughs> quite rich in history. I could probably elaborate <laughs> on that. But, you yeah. know, we are five questions with and we've come to the end of our five questions, Marg. And I just want to say I'm so, so grateful that you could join me today and be part of this segment. You're one of the special people in my life and I'm really, really grateful to know you and, and be a part of um, the community that we live in. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. It's it's certainly my privilege to for, for you to have come in, into my world as well and, and some of the things we've been able to work together yeah, with yeah, yeah for the it's benefit cool. of, of other people as well. Yeah, so it's been really it's been a real privilege, yeah. yeah. So well, thank for, you. you're you're so welcome. And for those watching, I'm going to put Marg's all Marg's details, her social media platforms, her web address under the video. So if you'd like to connect with her in any way, shape or form, you'll have all the details at your fingertips. So bye for now. I'll sign out and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Marg. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.